bonds, that which may never break ranks without orders, which order disobeyed might be a collapse and destruction of the whole universe. Thus, in exacting God is given the command, Attention, worlds, into line ye suns and planets, music by the band, forward march, left, 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 and never halt. For all is in motion and never halted to even give birth to a baby world. Go on and on, in my command, as seems to be from the very mouth and mind of God, as we would now express the thought for motion is found in all worlds and beings. We are conducted by thought to the power of mind, with all its works and beauties, with the exacting commands of perfection. At this time we are left in the midst of an ocean of thought, with some evidence that by combining the brain with the heart, we see its force and source by which the machinery of life is driven, of which we will tell you more of what we see pass before our telescope in the far-off hidden mysteries as we grow older and wiser, if ever. From my lack of knowledge and want of wisdom as an operative engineer, I must halt and take a place of speculata speculative brother gone from labor to refreshments for all the days of my life. I cannot be happy and be idle. I will use my pen and feed the coming minds the best I can, so I must say farewell as a physical engineer. From the day of Moses until the present time, by habit and education, we have been taught to believe and depend upon drugs as the only known method of obtaining relief from pain, sickness, and death. By habit and use of drugs and sickness through so many generations, we as a people think there is no remedy outside of them, and as the mind has been so unalterably fixed on that thought for so many years during all ages of the past, people have felt it a duty, if not a necessity, to be go governed by established customs. We feel when our friends are sick, we must do something to relieve them. If the household remedies fail, we call on the family doctor and turn the case over to him, and he will call counsel, and when he feels he cannot manage the disease, then if the patient dies... The family and friends are satisfied that all had been done for the sufferer that was possible. Every known remedy and skill has been exhausted, and we must be content with the results. Death has prevailed, and we feel that we have done our duty. I wish to say that the graduates who are about to go out in the world, and that I entered this contest I took as my foundation to build upon the whole universe with its worlds, men and women, fishes, fowls and beasts, with all their forms and principles of life, were formulated by the main mind of an unerring God. He has placed all the principles of motion, life, and all its remedies to be used in sickness inside of the human body. He has placed them somewhere in the structure. If he knew how, or he has left his machinery of life at the very point wherein his skill should execute its most important work, I have given you the reasons which why I believed I was warranted in testing God's skill as a doctor and must proceed cautiously to my duty. How to do all the all-absorbing question of my mind, I finally concluded that I would do like unto a carpenter when he knows he has the elements to contend with and desires to cover an old house with new shingles. If he takes the shingles off, all off at once, he exposes all that is in the house to rain, hail, or what may be in the elements. A wise carpenter would take off a few at a time and cover what had been exposed before proceeding further. I knew it would not do to take the shingles of hope, medicine, off the afflicted all at once. I felt that such a move, with my knowledge of cause and effect, would be calamitous. Soon I met a case of flux, and being a physician and familiar with the remedies for such diseases, such questions as, those, as these arose. What was God's remedy? Has God a drugstore? Does he use sedatives for flux? Does he use sweating powders such as Dover's and so forth? Does he use astringents? Does he use alcohol in any form in prostration? And if he does, what does he use it for? And why is it one dies with flux and another gets well after having used the same remedies? Would our dead patients have lived had we kept our drugs out of him? Did the, did the convalescent have the power to resist both disease and drugs? You may answer the question, I cannot. One is dead, the other alive, and that is all I know about it. And my brother councilman expresses the same feeling and says, I do not know. With all remedies seemed, seemed, when all remedies seemed to fail in my first case of flux, I felt I had done my duty and no censor would follow in case of death. Myself and council had agreed 
that this case was bound to die. Without any instruction or textbook to be governed by, I concluded to take one shingle off the spinal cord and see if I could not put a new one in its place that would do better. To my great surprise, I found the flux stopped at once. That shingle contained all the opium, whiskey, and quinine that God thought necessary to cure flux. That shingle took the pain out, the fever off, and stopped the discharge from the bowels in me, and my confidence in drugs was very badly shaken then and there. I soon had opportunities to treat many more cases of flux, all of which recovered without the use of any drug that was recommended by our standard authorities, which convinced me that the laws of God are trustworthy when thoroughly understood. By investigation, I was led to a better understanding of, of the cause of flux, and that flux was an effect that could be traced to a cause in the spinal cord and other nerves, and the remedy should be addressed to cause and not the effect. I fe felt proud to be able to say that the people that I could throw all the known remedies for flux out of the window and give them a reliable and demonstrative substitute that I had found on a prescription written by the hand of the infinite. I kept up this method of removing old and putting on new shingles until the house was entirely covered. I have written this bit of history for the express purpose of warning all students of osteopathy against the danger of breaking down when they have a difficult case and sending for some drug doctor and asking him to do that which they cannot, because they do not know what set of nerves are distributed by pressure and are made to assert that they have said about the power of nature to cure is false and else they do not understand their, their business. There are some osteopaths out in the field trying to treat osteopathically and yet have a drug doctor running around with them. If one will examine their work, he will find such persons feeble in osteopathic knowledge with less than one year in school previous to the time of offering their services to the people. You are apt to find on their cards such and such MDs in our office, with a great long apology for our ignorance, and say we do thus and say to please the people. Every drug tolerated by an osteopath in a disease will shake the confidence of your most intelligence pa intelligent patients and cause them to always take your words, skill, and ability at a great discount. I would advise you to bathe your heads long and often in the rivers of divine confidence and pray God to take care of you with other weak-minded people who pretend to know that which they have not studied. Rely on your anatomy, physiology, and rub your heads or deny the perfection of God and intelligence and say I am only osteopathy in one pocket and pills in the other and none in my head. Much more could be written on this line, but I have said enough to warn you against being a kite tail to any system of drugs which is your most deadly enemy. A doctor will use you for what money he can get out of you. Osteopathy is now legalized in four states, and you do not have to compromise your profession nor your dignity by associating with anything. Your opportunities from the American School of Osteopathy to master the science are good, for your foundation is solid. I want you to come back with heads up, and on your return I want you to say, I have transacted my business as the institution teaches me, without the aid or assistance of any medical doctor either before or behind me, I have proven that the laws of the infinite are all sufficient when properly administered. When you are out in the field, the medical doctors will sail around you like buzzards do over a sick cow, pick your eyes out, and fill their pockets from your labor, and that is all they use they have for you.